This is a tiny British territory, just two and a half square miles in total with Spain. Just about a 10 minute drive from here, I can see some of the, the tower blocks uh, to my right and across the water uh, is Gibraltar. Now Gibraltar has been, uh, sorry, is Morocco. Now Gibraltar has been associated oh. with the UK for the last 300 years or so. And people tell, here tell me they're very proud of that. Uh, but many who live, work and play here are also very concerned about their future that's so inextricably tied to the result of the EU referendum and their destiny linked to the vote of millions uh, in the UK. Well, with me here is Mike Nichols. Uh, he's from the Chamber of Commerce uh, and lawyer Charles Gomez, who's written a about the internal conflict he feels about how to vote uh, in a few weeks' time. Mark, if I, Mike, if I start with you, uh, the EU referendum really is a talking point uh, here on The Rock. From a business perspective, just how important is the result? I think it's a game changer. It's a game changer for my business and for many of our members. And that's because the, the fluidity of the border with Spain is dependent upon us being in the EU. History shows us that we can't really trust the Spanish, and if we vote out, then they could, they may not, but they could close the border, and that has a huge, huge impact on our life as we know it now, which is pretty good, so I can't see the point of risking that future that we have at the moment. I've heard a lot of people talk about those concerns about the border, but those who support the Leave campaign are very clear. They say that there will be a new trade agreement and just a different, possibly a better way of doing business. I think the ELK campaign is all about what may happen, this could happen, this might happen. There's no proof. And I think the last 30 years of EU membership have been hugely beneficial for Gibraltar. Our trade relies upon it ever more so than perhaps the UK. And I cannot see why we, we would risk um, our current lifestyle, which is, which is pretty good, with, with an absolutely uncertain future. I think it's, uh, I think it's unwise. If I could just turn to you, Charles Gomez, you're a lawyer here. You've written about this conflict about the long and the short-term future of Gibraltar. Uh, many people I've spoken here to here want to stay. A recent poll suggested about 85% of the 26,500 who are eligible to vote will put their cross in the let's stay in. What are your thoughts? Well, instinctively, I'm against uh, remaining in the European Union. I think the European Union's performance up in the lead up to 2008 and the economic crisis when uh, European regulation failed completely uh, moves me to the idea that the EU has failed. The current uh, immigration issue, which is a major issue, which is uh, of, existential, uh, of an existential nature for Europe, is another thing that leads me to the uh, conclusion that the EU has its days numbered. However, in Gibraltar, we have a specific uh, set of circumstances, and that specific set of circumstances is due to the current Spanish government, which will interest uh, uh, people who, who are looking at the European Union, because the current Spanish government has essentially abdicated all its foreign affairs to Brussels. Now, this means that uh, Spain has stopped uh, its bilateral relations which, with its uh, natural trading partners in South America, in the Philippines, in North Africa, which was a uh, Spanish uh, sphere of influence, and has given everything to uh, Brussels to run. Now, the, unfortunately for Gibraltar, the byproduct of that is that the foreign ministry in Spain has no work to do and only one obsessive issue, which is to do Gibraltar down. So, unfortunately, Gibraltar is faced with a, a situation where we have a, a major European country which wants uh, uh, to eliminate us as, a, as, as a, an autonomous territory. So, unfortunately, and despite my huge reservations, as to the European Union and my hope that the European Union should shortly be dismantled, the threat from Spain is such that on the day I'm afraid I'm going to have to vote in. But you've clearly had to have a long, hard think about that for all the reasons that you've just said there. When you look to the future, though, do, do you see that as being something long-term that, that, that Gibraltar could do, that it could be separate from the EU, just briefly? Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm positive about this. I think I'm hopeful that, uh, you know, immediately after the referendum, there's a, another general election in Spain. Spain hasn't had a government since... Uh, 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 December 2015, it's got a, take, a caretaker government, 
And I am very hopeful that there will be a, a change of government there and the old guard, uh, the, these uh, people who, who, who actually, uh, the for current foreign minister uh, traces his, his roots to the, the time immediately after Franco's uh, regime will be substituted by reasonable people. I'm, I'm, I've got very good friends in, in Spain, and I can say that come a change of government in Spain, it may not be uh, as difficult as it is for us now. But unfortunately, we have to deal with a situation now, and that is that we have a very aggressive, unreasonable government in Madrid. Charles Gomez, thank you very much indeed. Mike Nichols, also uh, thank you for joining me here. Well, Claire, you've heard there some of the, the thoughts, the discussions, the conflict uh, that some people feel here. And as I say, if I turn around and just look to my uh, right, I can see Spain and that border crossing uh, that Mike and uh, Charles have talked about and that close proximity to Spain casts a very different light on uh, how people view this EU referendum in the coming weeks. It's been a fascinating insight. Thank you so much. That's a Five Lives Sarah Ransom on uh, the answer. Thank you.